Paul Briegel, by the way, during the forecast, you can make comments and smart aleck remarks and everything like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and he, of course, is the uh, director of the... Is it director, executive director? Oh, I give, I give well, you a raise every you time. Know, it's been so long is since it manager I've been here. of the airport? I, it's just director. You're yeah. the director yeah. of the Stillwater. But for you, I can be the executive director. Yeah, we've talked yeah. about titles yeah. before. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and I wouldn't want your title. <laughs> a lot more work than hosting a little morning show, isn't it? So. Well, I don't know about that. You've had some pretty tough times here recently. So. Well, we've had adventures to cover. Yes, that's it, for sure. That's for sure. But the high today should be at 96. Uh, winds out south at 17 miles an hour. Overnight low of 70, and then uh, four tomorrow. Uh, scattered showers in the forecast tomorrow. Really, the next several days, we could have showers. Could. 85 should be the high tomorrow. Saturday, scattered showers and 87. Then Sunday, a slight chance of showers, 92. Next week, most days, about a 20% chance of a thunderstorm, and the high anywhere from 86, 87 to 92 or so. Just kind of early summer, right? Bring on the rain, though. My gosh, we need it. I haven't had to mow in two yards, two weeks, I, two I'm, weeks. I'm kind of liking that, but my allergies have gone oh, they? overdrive the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, I think that's dry weather. Uh, current temperature at 73 degrees downtown Stillwater. And we officially welcome Paul Priegel, Good the morning. director of Stillwater Airport. Good to see you, because we've had a little bit of a break here I since know. really the pandemic. It, how long I guess. has it been? I was trying to look at my calendar, and the last time I had you on my calendar, which was more, I think, the the, the city schedule part was like January, and I was like, I know it's been since January, but... Probably February. Probably February. Has it been that long then? I think so, yeah. Wow. Well, you know, it'll hit uh, mid-March. Yeah. Well, not even quite mid-March, with a Thunder deal. Yeah. And I know it for the state basketball tournament because it was in the going to have its second week. We were hoping to see Perry Maroons at the yep. big house. Yep. And uh, and so it's been just that long. And here we are in June. So it's it's probably been that long. I so. tell you what, and it's been a. I wouldn't say it's been a blur so much. It's just it's amazing, in the moment how slow the time goes by. But then you look back and it's like, oh my gosh, it's been three months. And you, I, I'm having a hard time still. You know, we've been back. Um, full swing, I guess, since June 1st, and um, I look up, and it's Friday at 5, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, where'd the week go? But then during the week, I can't even keep track of what day it is, yeah. so uh, it's, it's, it's a crazy time. Well, we've sure. lost our, our signature events, yes. whether it's sports or just a vacation. Yep, you know, it's like sure. I postponed. I had a mini vacation and then a vacation scheduled yeah. and had to cancel or did cancel both those and just kind of rescheduled, and if you had places rented or something like that, you know, which, which I did, yeah. uh, you kick it down the, the, the road and then say maybe in the fall. Right? Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people are doing. We're starting to see numbers creep back at the airport. Not, um, um, obviously what we were pre COVID, but, um, you know, we're, I think, I think nationwide, I don't, I don't know if you've ever gone to the TSA website. You can go to, uh, just type in, I like guess a, I have Yeah, go to search engine and type in TSA throughput and it'll give you. It's updated about eight o'clock every morning for the prior day, and uh, throughput. Just, spell that. Oh, T is T H R U R O U G H P U T. Okay, I didn't know I was going to be spelling bee. Well, you sometimes <laughs> I don't cheat on many words, you know, because I try not to yeah. spell like I was in junior high when I'm doing text or anything. Because you know, you read all that stuff yeah. and you go really, but through I do. I put the T H R U. A lot of people do. Well, when you know, be honest, when I get on Google and I think you hit T S A and then T H and then all of a sudden it oh, just does it itself. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. it's pretty commonly searched right now. But you know, it's. It goes clear back to March 1st, which is when I think as a nation we start really seeing the, yeah. the impact on the aviation world. And, um, you know, it there was a, a point in there, I want to say it was around March 20th, March 21st, that, I mean, we were down as a nation 96, 97 percent. On a given yeah. day, two to two and a half million people go through TSA checkpoints. And that's what this site's reporting is. It's showing how many people nationwide have gone through our checkpoints. And it'll give you last year's number, same day, and this year's. And so it's crazy to, to look at it because it, it's cyclical, just like anything else. You know, you can almost always look at certain days of the week and they're going to be down because those are just kind of right. down travel days, so to speak. But in general, we're at we stay between two and two and a half million people going through TSA checkpoints a day. And that's, I mean, think about it, that's a lot yeah. of people. We got down uh, somewhere around, like I said, March 20th time frame in the 80,000s. Um, yeah. And so uh, last Thursday was the first day that we broke 500,000 nationwide. 
but we're still down 80%. Yeah. And so um, I'm, you know, we almost, almost correlate directly with that number locally. I think um, uh, we, at our lowest, were down that 96, 98%, somewhere around there. How long did you go without flights at all? We, we've maintained flights the entire time. Now, we have seen a reduction in our flight schedule. Uh, there was uh, several days that the flights went out empty uh, during this kind of yeah. the heart of lockdown, so to speak, however you want to call it. Well, when you're saying 98%, when you're dealing with the numbers you are, you're talking about there might have been four, five, or six people on a plane sometimes. Uh, we've sent them out empty. We've sent them out with one or two in there. Um, yeah. And... Um, but but what's happened is you know of course normally this time of year we'd have been into three flights uh, we had um, the last two summers into fall we've we've enjoyed a third flight evening flight that's really helped our traveling particularly the leisure area. By the way, I like hearing that again. What's that? I like uh, I like hearing the flights again. I live close to the airport. Yeah, I live well, by the lake, and, and you're going out. Oh, they're flying again. I'll tell you, uh, it's been eerie out there at times, and and just. Uh, sitting in the office, I think you get used to hearing the yeah. buzz of the airplanes going overhead, and then when you don't hear it, you kind of go, "Hmm, there's something something missing." Uh, it does become part of your just what you, your every moment after a right. while. Yeah. And I don't think I used to hear them after a while. Well, and, and now I hear every one of them. And ninety percent or better of our traffic is OSU yeah. flight students, and uh, they never came back from spring break, and so it's been very very quiet. Uh, because and uh, they're going to come back, I think, right after the Fourth of July, July sixth or seventh, somewhere around there, and start flying again. That's also when our uh, midday flight comes back. Uh, you know, talking about our reduced schedule, right. we uh, uh, there were several days that flights were canceled, but they were waiting. They would wait till like Sunday, and they would look out, you know, the next week and go. You know, we don't have anybody scheduled for Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday, or whatever the, the day was, and then they would make the decision to cancel. Um, but those were very few and far between, considering. Yeah. Uh, the biggest... Hey, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to ask if you've flown. I have not. You know, the last time I flew was the first week of March. I had a conference to yeah. go to in Arizona, and it was really, it was a little bit unnerving because we were starting to really see the hot zones yeah. uh, out on our coastal cities, and, and so... Anytime you go through, um, you know, from our airport, you go through a hub, um, and the hub is big, uh, so there's a lot of people, a lot of international uh, and domestic travel put together. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, the as far as like, you know, angst or anxiety about it, once I got into the flow of things, it really wasn't any different. Um, I was a lot more conscious about what I touched, and I took, you know, a little more hand sanitizer with me than I probably normally would have and yeah. made sure. Um, I, I remember when I sit down, I think on the way back, um, I had, I, I'd taken a very small hand sanitizer on the way and almost used it all before I even got on the, the plane in Dallas to go out to Arizona. Half nerves, probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. And uh, so on the way back, I or before I came back, I stopped at a drugstore and got a little next size up, you know, and so <laughs> yeah. I had it. And so when I sit down, I took that hand sanitizer and I rubbed it on my hands and then I, I rubbed it over the, yeah. the armrest and the tray table and all that. And, and I just remember the lady sitting next to me just kind of gave me these eyes like, what in the world are you doing? And, and I was just like, you know, here in about 20 minutes, they're going to bring me a Dr. Pepper and pretzels. And I'm like, you know, I want to be right. You yeah. know, as safe as possible. So, um, I do that with shopping carts when I get the sanitizer Yep. Oh, I and, and then I take a, another, the wipe or whatever and wipe it up, yep. even though they say they've already done, uh, yeah. already done them and they probably have, but I do that with shopping yeah. cart. And so, so yeah, it, but it, uh, very few masks. I think uh, I saw two masks my whole trip. They, we didn't see a lot of the masks. But, but yet. when was that? This was again early March. Yeah. So the masks hadn't quite. In fact, I believe at that time they were incur they were starting to encourage people not uh, to go out and, and at least for the medical grade stuff or right. you know yes. it, yeah. you remember you couldn't find even your dust mask at Lowe's. Uh, I mean you couldn't find anything. Yeah, um, that's what I used. I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I had. I think two left over from right. from mowing the lawn, yep. and so I had that for a while, and then uh, I have a friend, and she made me a couple and stuff like that. Well, so. I remember that first week or so, uh, as w when this thing really started taking aim for our community, knowing that we were going to, you know, have to go into some some 
pretty extreme measures. We started, um, we, we meet regularly as department heads anyways. We have a called director's meeting um, about usually once a month, and that gives us time to uh, talk face-to-face. -face. We, we're a pretty close group, so we, to say it's not our only opportunity to talk with city management, yeah. but it gives us um, that kind of a focal point of, okay, now we've got an agenda that we want to make sure you have all the facts on or, or, Hey, this is coming up. We want you to kind of be aware of this, that type of deal. Well, we started, we've started meeting weekly now. And, uh, of course, when we went into our various staffing levels, we went to zoom. Uh, yeah. and even t today, for example, we have a zoom meeting. Um, uh, even though we're all back in the the office, so to speak, uh, we're not going to risk by just throwing all of our department heads in one room and having a face-to-face -face right. meeting. We would all love that, but it gives us that chance to connect. And But where, where I was going with that is we're talking about masks. I remember uh, that very first meeting that we had in a group, we were starting to mow. Uh, and you know, we have 1,400 acres to mow. Yeah. And a lot of my employees wear masks just to keep the dust and stuff right. out of their, their lungs and stuff. And we didn't, couldn't find any. And so uh, I said, does anybody have masks? And a couple of our departments had, you know, just the, the dust mask that they lent us and uh, got us by. But yeah, it's been, um, um, it's been a, a very interesting time um, just trying to navigate. Oh yeah. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you were talking about the city manager. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I love about this city, and I do mean this, is the fact that one, I think we have really top-notch people. We have a great city council. But the, the size of the city, to me, is perfect because mm -hmm. we get a lot of stuff done. But you mentioned city manager. Right. Okay. I think it's important to have a, a relationship that's good and you can count on each other and can almost read each other's mind. Right. Well, you worked for Norm before yeah. as a police officer. Yeah, I don't and, know what's wrong with him. He's hired me three different times. I'm right. not sure we'll question his, his... But I just think that helps our efficiency. You're trusting yeah. because you know who you can count on and you, and you can be honest yeah. as opposed to if you have a lot of new folks all the time, can they really be honest? Do you right. are you are you worried about okay what kind of impression I, I can make? Well, you've already got that relationship going, and we can get get stuff done. Does that make sense? Well, absolutely. And you know, if you've seen anything with you know city council or uh, our city management speaking at council or in other engagements, you will know that one of the biggest things that uh, Norman and the city council push is that transparency aspect. You know, we want people to. Um, know what's going on and see. And, and one of the things that's really helped us um, as department heads and as a city employee is from the very beginning, there was um, uh, just absolute transparency on this is what we're thinking. This is what we're looking at. We don't know if we're going to do this, but, you know, give us your feedback, not this, hey, you walk into a room and be told this is what you're doing right. and shut up and, and take it. Uh, it was a very, um, I thought, empathetic look. You know, I, I'll tell you, I don't envy the city management or the council, mayor, or any of them right now, because they're, they're in a real, you know, dang if you do, dang if you don't yeah. scenario. But we were told from the very beginning, um, and and of course, if you've sat in any director's meeting, um, you hear it from Norman McNichol, our city manager, almost every time, is our employees are, are our, our biggest investment and our top priority. And so going into this, you know, my wife got furloughed. Um, I, I can't tell you the number of people I know that, that yeah. were let up off of work, either permanently or in a furlough fashion. And going into this, he told us, he goes, our employees are first. We are going to take care of our employees. If, you know, the laying people off, furloughing is going to be the very last option any minute. And we've, um, I think as a, um, we had enough to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> and so having that off the plate at least helped us think more clearly I, and, and really focus on what needed to happen. And so um, I, I can't say that, you know, that's like that in every business, but um, I, I can tell you it's it's really solidified with me. You know, of course, I've I've been a pro Stillwater City of Stillwater right. employee now for a long time, but I tell you what, it's times like this that you really are, are truly appreciative of who you work for. Yeah, amen to that. You know, and it, it it has been a time of soul searching, I think, because yeah. it's easy to sit and criticize people who are taking a view you don't agree with or something. Right. But for example, for this job, we were deemed essential. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also, I can remember very early on, I got a note, uh, a favorable note from my boss, from the owner. And, um, 
and it was sort of complimentary on, you know, he'd been listening and stuff. But then I got a follow-up note that meant more than that. And it was just, by the way, how you doing? Right. You know, because you've seen a lot of people. How you doing? Yep. That meant a lot. You, you know, just the little thing. And it was like, mm-hmm. I feel fine. I'm feeling great. But I really appreciate that. And another thing I thought of with the, because uh, we were sort of deemed essentials, you know, because, I mean, um, hopefully we get the message out there. But that make us more important than the people who provide us with our gasoline or our right. groceries or That's anything true. like that. But I thought, what if they come out and say, you know, we are shutting down, and that includes you guys. Would my first reaction be mad, right? Yeah. You know, be critical, because now it's affecting me, Yeah. right? I, hopefully it wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, and so it, you have to do soul searching and say, yeah, what if it were me that were having to, to make those changes? And I didn't really, my job, I think it's, it's changed on the content, but my job hasn't changed. Yeah, and I think, I think more than anything, this experience has really reiterated how important it is to be, um, to be aware and uh, focus on the bigger picture outside of yourself. You know, uh, we used to, when I was a police officer a long time ago, that was called nobility in policing, uh, is, is being in this for something bigger than yourself. You're not in it for self-promotion. You're not in it for you know, accolades, you're, you're in it because a bigger part of, you know, the community. And I, I'll tell you our culture, uh, at the, at the city, and I've been here, you know, at the set at the city for only 13, 14 years now. And, and we've certainly had our share of culture shifts, but the one that we just, you know, that's really, uh, solid right now is that serving, uh, yeah. you know, that community. And, and again, it's, I think that's why, um, particularly right now, there's so much, um, back and forth on decision making and, and how we what our next steps are. We're seeing rises and we're seeing different things, but um, because we're not just making a decision based on on one viewpoint or what my gut says, we, uh, we're trying to take a very uh, holistic look at what is not only what are, what's going to happen when we do this, but what is the steps five steps from now that's right. going to you know the ripple effect and all that. And so it's it's tough. And I, I like I said earlier, I don't envy uh, the ones in those decision making positions right now. Yeah, and you mentioned you're a, 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 a cop also for a long time, mm-hmm. and that's been in the spotlight as right. well. Right. And not to get all into that because you hear enough of that. <laughs> but I saw. Um, I don't know who retweeted it. There's a guy named Rex Chapman that does a lot of stuff that's mm-hmm. funny. A lot of it's very inspiring. Also, not all of it, but right. a lot of it. But it was, I, I, you see something and you go, I hope this takes fire and people see that because that's more the norm than some of the others. But it was, I think it was in Florida and it was a, at a Cracker Barrel. Mm-hmm. But a but policeman took this picture of uh, a note that was left. Yeah, I saw that. And yeah. uh, two African-American women were in there. Mm-hmm. And they left. They didn't tell him at the time, but they told him, hey, we're picking up that, you know, he was a policeman in there by right. himself, I think. He was uh, waiting between assignments of some sort. And they left him a note, and it said, um, Black Lives Matters, but, sort, but so does yours. Right, yeah. Thank you for your service, or something like that. And it said, paid. Yeah. And, that, you know, that's special. And we need to see more of that. And I think it goes on more, because I know we've had Kyle Gibson. I haven't talked to Kyle in a way. Yeah. He, but about the reaching out and, you know, with kids a lot of times saying, right. hey, we're your friends, not your enemies. Well, and, and that they're, I mean, it's still going on. I need to have Kyle in. But uh, just about a reach out program to the community, especially with children or, or oh, yeah. teens that are, are, are saying, are you on my side or are you against me? And well, to show where you're, you're on everybody's side. When, you know, when I was, the last several years I was at the police department, we, um, we really, We've always done community outreach uh, as long as I can I can remember, uh, but we really formalized the community outreach program, and uh, you know one of the big pushes for that was to create those instances. You know I said it many many times. You're usually not having your best day when you call the police, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, even if if the police are helping you, whether it be a changing a flat tire or, right. or recovering stolen property or whatever, even the, you don't wake up, I'm having a great day, let's call the police. And so um, a lot of the community outreach that, that we did uh, was to provide those opportunities to see our officers in that different light uh, when they're not having a bad day, but when they're actually able to go and see them as the humans they are. Um, and, uh, you know, we also... Um, 
created the Citizens Academy, which gave um, um, the groups of people able to come in. And it's just, it's, you know, it, it, anybody that's gone through that can, can attest. It's not a sit down and listen to what we're going to tell you. It's we're going to explain, but we're also we want to hear from you. And it's uh, it's very much an interactive point that, um, you know, when when we may tell you why we're doing something, but then um, someone else may pose a question that causes us to go, you know what, we haven't made that point very clear. We need to yeah. we need to be a little bit more upfront about that. Or maybe, you know, that that policy maybe needs to be tweaked a little bit. So it is truly kind of that live feedback of, of everything. And and uh, uh, but it's it's we have a tremendous community. Um, I can tell you, um, despite the national climate, you know, and, and this is this is far worse than I've seen it, you know, in my time as a law enforcement. But we've had these um, these things come right. up over the last ten years, and I can tell you that our relationships with the community have, have really, uh, I think, stood out uh, largely positive, um, and. Um, you know, everybody, everybody on is is uh, susceptible, um, and and change is always, you know, some we're never perfect. We we know that, but uh, our community has has really always backed our our departments, um, and uh, I I just and, and vice versa. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And because so, if, it's, if there's any event going on, fundraising, whether it's seatbelt awareness, right, anything with kids or whatever. You guys are always there. The police yeah. is always there. Yeah. So hats off to them. So, yeah, and you're right. Uh, you've said that before, I think, about nobody ever calls on a good day. Yep, absolutely. I was having some uh, some issues with a utility, not a city utility, I'll just say with a cable, right? Uh -huh. And when you and then when you have to wait, say, 30 minutes to talk to somebody, you're automatically not in a good mood when you get to them. I know. <laughs> and I apologize to one of them. I said, I know you have to deal with the public. And, and I deal with the public some here. So right. I, I, I've had people mad at me. I know what it's like. Yeah. Uh, and so I never was mad at her, but I thought, I just bet they get beat up on the phone because <laughs> everybody that calls them yep. is mad at them. Yep. That's a bad job. <laughs> yep, I, I agree. So, hey, we'll take a time out. We'll dive into some more of this stuff here right. and uh, and talk more about the airport. I want to know some of the rules and stuff. Absolutely. And, and uh, But the, as you continue to open things up, believe me more. So.